plan. Hey, YouTube theologians, Pastor Wolfmuller here. I was going to do a, a video about the seven myths about death and dying, which is what we talked about in Sunday school this morning, but I can only remember the first one. Can you believe that? So we'll talk about the gospel lesson today, which was this beautiful text from Matthew chapter 9. I've been meditating on this idea that we are tempted to make everything political. You, I am. I notice it when I'm like, what should I listen to on the podcast? I'm like, I got to listen to the news, to the politics, see what's going on. That's what really matters, etc., etc. But I really noticed that a couple of weeks ago, uh, someone showed me a, a video. It was a reaction video to the new Texas uh, law, which is um, prohibits abortion, makes abortion illegal. It's great. You all come to Texas. This is good. Well, maybe not all of you, but well, you uh, YouTube theologians, every YouTube theologian should come to Texas. I take that back. All y'all, come on, let's go. But I saw a reaction to that, to that law. It was a lady, and it was the kind of typical thing that you hear, like people who are pro-life or just pro-life until the baby's born, and then you don't care anymore. You know, like. As long as the baby's born, it can live in squalor, and who cares? And this video was saying, now that you got your way with the pro-abortion stuff, now you can start doing all the social safety nets that surely you want to do, like free Medicare and free medical care all around, and free birthing care, and free poverty care, and free social safety net. In other words, it was all these kind of social safety nets that needed to be added to protect all these children who are being born in difficult situations. Now, there's a bunch of things that really sort of struck me about that video. One is that I, this connection between poverty and abortion, like, like if you're rich enough, then abortion isn't necessary. It's just a, there's a, a, anyway, that's not the point. The point is that this lady who made this video assumed that the only way to solve any problem was through the state. Like, it was a kind of a double thing. Number one, that every problem could be solved. And number two, that the, the, the solver of every problem is the state. I was talking to Pastor Graff about this this last week, and he said that um, he quoted Cheslov Milov, the, where was he, from Polish poet who was writing and, then, and said, and then everything became political. And I was trying to find that quotation, which I could not find, so if you know where it is, please send it to me. But in the searching for that, I found an article by Gene Edward Veith, which I will link to you in the Wednesday Whatnot this week. Sign up at wolfmuller.co. It's free. And you'll get that kind of stuff that I'm reading along. And Dr. Gene Edward Veith quotes some guy talking about the French Revolution who said this was the problem that came out of the French Revolution. The ideologies on both sides assumed that every problem was solvable and solvable by the state. Everything becomes, everything becomes political. Everything. And not just... And this quote was really great because if everything's political, then everything is seen in terms of, of, of a fight. You versus me. Everything is understood in terms of opposition. Now, Graf, and you'll have to go back and listen to some of his stuff. Maybe I'll interview him, but I've talked to him about this somewhere. Uh, what takes dials this all back to Baalism, which is really interesting. Remember Baalism? The golden cow kind of stuff? Because Baal was all about the power and the power struggle and who can dominate who. Everything's politics. Now, we are Christians. If you're not a Christian, you should be. Come on. But uh, if you are a Christian, then we are Christians, which means that we cannot, must not, reduce everything to politics. 
you know, there's the argument in the state because we say, look, there's also the family in the church. And the state says, well, we don't know that. We don't know if a person is a Christian or is a part of a, a community of faith. We don't know if someone has a family or not. So the state is the only thing that's sure, the only thing that is absolute. Everything else is accidental. And we have to reject that. No, the three estates are instituted by God and they stand. So if there's problems, number one, we can't solve every problem. Looked like there's something on my thumb. Number one, we can't solve every problem. Number two, even this, uh, the problems that we can solve are not all solved by the state. There are other solutions. The Christian theory here is subsidiarity. Footnote, listen to Al Mohler. Now, how did this come to the Bible? We had Mark chapter 9 today, and Mark chapter 9 is nice because, well, there's just a lot of nice stuff going on there, but one of them, they're coming down off the Mount of Transfiguration, and uh, Jesus is wandering around Galilee with his disciples, and he's trying to stay on the back roads because he doesn't want anybody to know where he is because he's trying to tell the disciples, hey, I'm going to Jerusalem to die and then be raised. In fact, Mark tells us that. He didn't want anybody to know where he was because he was trying to teach the disciples this. This is the second time Jesus tells them about his death, the second of the third, what's called the Passion Predictions, which are important texts to study. And Jesus takes him aside and says, look, guys, I'm going to be handed over. I'm going to be killed on the third day. I'm going to be raised. And they did not know what he was talking about. I'm not being rude. That's what Mark tells us. They had no idea what he was talking about, and they were afraid to ask him. Whew. So instead, what do they do? They let Jesus walk up ahead, and they hang back, and they do what you and I do. They default to the political conversation. They don't understand all of this stuff about the suffering Messiah, about the Christ who's not going to sit on the throne of David and overthrow the Romans. That doesn't make any sense to them. We got to sit back and talk politics. And you know what that is? Who's the greatest? Who is the greatest? That's what they, in fact, not only were they talking about it in a civil way, they were arguing about it. So Jesus asks when they get to Peter's house at Capernaum, I'm guessing it was Peter's house. Jesus asks, what were you guys talking about on the road? <laughs> like he didn't know. I mean, he knows, that's why he's asking. Like in the Garden of Eden. Where are you, Adam? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> and they wouldn't tell him. They look at each other, here are these big macho, sweaty fishermen. Jesus asked, what are you guys talking about? They just... Nothing. <laughs> we laugh at the disciples. We should laugh at the disciples because when we laugh at the disciples, we're also laughing at ourselves because we do the same thing. I mean, every four years we sit around and say, who's the greatest around here? Oh, it's elect him. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? This is just that political conversation. Who's the greatest? We're having it all the time. It's the one conversation that we know how to have. If you put two kids in a room, five minutes into it, they're talking about who's the greatest. My dad's stronger than your dad, whatever. It's just how we... But Jesus is trying to say something else. If you want to be first, you have to become last and servant of all. And then, And then he gets a child. He lifts up this little boy and he puts him in the middle. Can you see it? All these guys sitting around, looking at the boy, looking at Jesus, looking at the boy. What's Jesus? What's he doing? And then Jesus takes him up in his arms. The Greek word there means to embrace. He gives them a hug. It's only used twice. In Mark chapter 9, what we're talking about, and in Mark chapter 10. Don't let the little children come to me. Don't forbid them. Such is the kingdom of heaven. And he took them up in his arms and he blessed them. That's the same word there. He hugged them. Jesus hugs the kids. 
he gra- and, and you got to see it like this. You know, one of the great things about kids is that when you, when they recognize you and you hold out your arms to them, they just flop over into your hands. <laughs> it's the greatest. I mean, there's like no gravity, no sense of danger, no nothing. They just sort of throw themselves into your hands. So Jesus puts this boy up in the midst of them, and they're all staring him down, and then Jesus opens his hands, and this boy just throws himself into the arms of Jesus, and Jesus picks him up, and he hugs him. Oh, so great. And as he holds him there, he says to the disciples, whoever receives one of these little ones in my name receives me. No, not me, the one who sent me. (laughs) This is what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, to be down on the floor with the kids, giving them hugs. (laughs) This is is where the real life kind of stuff is. Who's the greatest? Now look, none of us are free from this temptation. The great, you know, the... You just got to keep it in its place and recognize that there's something more, something better from Jesus. Our God is the one who says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Our Lord is the one who said, I thirst. Jesus says, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. serves us. We're like these we're like this boy that just falls into the arms of Jesus. God be praised. That's Sunday Drive Home. <laughs> hey, I was just checking to see who the greatest on YouTube is, so you guys should subscribe. Although, you don't need to... You know, the best way, actually, this YouTube thing is an algorithm game. So if you want to help, you subscribe and like is great. Comment is great. Watch one of the next videos. Also... If you are between the ages of 18 and 35, uh, and you're not doing anything on August 2nd, oh wait, October 2nd, you should come to St. Paul Lutheran Church where we're gonna have a conference. I'll be talking about culturally woke or biblically enlightened. And you can join us for that. That should be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there.